Roderick. In an era marked by flashy attackers and flamboyant playmakers, a seismic change of enormous proportion has emerged. Rodri, the unassuming midfield maestro from Manchester City, has emerged as the 2024 Men's Ballon d'Or award winner after a phenomenal season. The midfielder won trophies for both his club and his country this year. He and Manchester City won their fourth straight Premier League in May before Rodri helped lead Spain to victory at Euro 2024. While it was a special night for Rodri, it was a frustrating one for Real Madrid's Vinicius Jr., who was arguably Rodri's biggest challenger for the coveted award. After the snub, fans and teammates of Vinicius voiced their support for the star. The biggest question was this, how can a player who didn't make it into the Premier League and UEFA Champions League's Team of the Year become the best player in the world? If he isn't even the best in his club, or arguably in his national team, how did he become the best in the world? In today's video, we'll dive in and uncover how Rodri beat Vinny for the Ballon d'Or. In his victory speech, Rodri highlighted the critical role of midfielders and dedicated the award to Spanish soccer and named such stars as Xavi, Iniesta, and Busquets. This is a win for players who never got recognition, he said, referring to the players who control the game from the center and rarely get the headlines they deserve. This statement of his is a good place to start in our understanding of what transpired a few days ago at the Ballon d'Or ceremony. Rodri's rise to prominence has been gradual but steady. He joined Manchester City from Atletico Madrid in 2019, and since then, he has become the heartbeat of Pep Guardiola's team. Unlike his more flamboyant teammates, Rodri doesn't rely on flashy skills or spectacular goals. Instead, he excels in the less glamorous aspects of the game quietly controlling the tempo and dictating the flow of matches. His ability to read the game is second to none. He anticipates opposition moves, intercepts passes, and breaks up attacks with impeccable timing. His range of passing is exceptional, allowing him to switch play seamlessly and create scoring opportunities for his teammates. Rodri's defensive contributions are equally impressive. He is a master of positioning and tackles, shielding his defense and preventing opposition attacks. Under Guardiola's tutelage, Rodri has developed into a true tactical mastermind. He understands the nuances of Guardiola's intricate system and executes his role with precision. His ability to adapt to different situations and opponents is a testament to his intelligence and versatility. Rodri's impact on Manchester City's historic treble-winning season can also not be denied. His consistent performances in the Premier League, FA Cup, and Champions League were crucial to the team's success. Whether it was dictating the tempo in midfield, breaking up opposition attacks, or providing defensive cover, Rodri was always at the heart of City's dominance. His performance in the Champions League final against Inter Milan was particularly impressive. He controlled the midfield, stifled Inter's attacks, and played a key role in City's 1-0 victory. This performance solidified his status as one of the best midfielders in the world. However, all of these happened two seasons ago, and while he was fantastic last season, one could argue that he didn't reach the heights of 2022. And, as though echoing this sentiment, Pep Guardiola had this to say earlier in the year about Rodri's rise. If holding midfielders start getting the attention of players like Erling Holland and Kevin De Bruyne, we'd have a problem. The holding midfielder should never, ever be in the highlights. They need to think for the whole team without expecting recognition. Without him, we couldn't accomplish what we're doing. But the spotlight should be on others, he added. However, Rodri somehow thinks otherwise. In his speech, he said the following, I give these awards just the amount of importance they deserve. It's a team sport, but individual awards always go to strikers because they have the final touch, he said. But those who truly understand the game, whether players or managers, know the value of a top goalkeeper, a skilled defender, a solid midfielder, and yes, a great striker. Titles aren't won by strikers alone. Look at championship teams. Their foundation is solid defense. If you defend well, your attack improves. So when I see these awards focused on goal scorers, it feels like a poor reflection of our sport. 
Given that Cristiano Ronaldo was the last Premier League player to win the Ballon d'Or back in 2008 with Manchester United, it definitely raises eyebrows that a defensive midfielder would be the next to win. And here we are, with Rodri as the new Ballon d'Or winner. Interestingly, his previous season may have been even more impressive, as he was instrumental in Manchester City's historic treble, scoring the decisive goal in the Champions League final. But it was his success with Spain that redefined his status. Named the best player at Euro 2024, his Ballon d'Or win feels like a long overdue acknowledgement of the man who orchestrates the play for the top teams, at club and international levels alike. Goals still catch the eye, but Rodri's commanding presence is undeniable. Picture City in possession, and you'll likely see Rodri passing left and right, the ball always just a few touches away from returning to him. Last season, he recorded over 4,000 touches in the Premier League, a record. His rhythmic style on the ball makes the game appear effortless, though it's far from it. Rodri receives passes under intense pressure, where a lesser player would hesitate. He holds off his marker, faints, and strides forward. Modern football tracks nearly everything, and some stats underscore what we see. Rodri made 2,068 passes last season while under pressure, 500 more than the next player on the list. He navigates tight spaces seamlessly. Yet, he rarely loses possession. Data allows us to measure the difficulty of passes based on opponents' positions. Rodri's passes might seem simple, but the volume he completes without error is remarkable. In fact, out of the 119 players who made over 1,000 passes in the Premier League last season, Rodri had the highest pass completion rate, exceeding expectations by 6.79 percentage points. And his passing is more daring than it appears. Rodri ranked among the top five players for line-breaking passes, rubbing shoulders with playmakers like Martin Odegaard and the risk-taking Bruno Fernandes. He also added a unique dimension with his chip passes, far more frequent than any other players. It's a stylistic choice, but also a statement. For those who prefer consequential stats, Rodri's tally included eight goals and nine assists in City's title-winning campaign. Only five players bettered his numbers in both categories, all of whom were forwards. Rodri offers much more. No Premier League player won possession in the midfield more often, and his skill in intercepting counterattacks illustrates why City was so unsettled during his recent injury. Internally, teammates and staff all recognize his importance, said Guardiola. With him, we're a better team, no question. The range of what he contributes makes him irreplaceable. This was especially clear when City lost five of six matches without him, a streak broken only by Luton. In 49 games with him, they remained unbeaten until their FA Cup final loss to Manchester United. Following his standout summer with Spain, Rodri's award feels bittersweet, given his current injury. Just days before he was sidelined, City fans unfurled a banner at the Etihad Stadium reading, Can we talk about Rodri? While City's fans might be celebrating, many fans of Vinicius, and in fact many attendees of the ceremony, were shocked. To start with, Vinicius Jr., along with Real Madrid nominees Jude Bellingham, Kylian Mbappe, Danny Carvajal, and club president Florentino Perez, skipped the 2024 Ballon d'Or ceremony in Paris on October 28. It was reported that Real Madrid withdrew their delegation's attendance at the last minute, having learned that their star forward Vinicius Jr. would not be named the winner. The 24-year-old Brazilian forward was heavily favored by bookmakers to secure his first Ballon d'Or after a standout season as the Champions League Player of the Year. Vinicius Jr. led the odds, placing him above Manchester City's Spanish midfielder Rodri, 28, and Real Madrid's own English sensation, Jude Bellingham. Vinicius Jr. was instrumental in Real Madrid's Champions League and La Liga triumphs last season, working alongside 21-year-old Bellingham, who earned La Liga MVP honors after scoring a career-best 19 goals and helping England reach the Euro 2024 final. In the 2023-24 season, Vinicius Jr. emerged as one of Europe's premier forwards, contributing 21 goals and 11 assists across La Liga and the Champions League. His pace, agility, and precision made him the focal point of Real Madrid's attack, forming a lethal partnership with Rodrigo and Bellingham. Vinicius' ability to create scoring opportunities helped drive Real Madrid to domestic and European success. In La Liga, his consistent performances gave Madrid an edge in tightly contested games, while his Champions League displays were even more impressive. 
Kentucky delivered decisive goals, notably scoring twice in the Champions League semi-final first leg against Bayern Munich and the match-winning goal in the final against Borussia Dortmund, securing Real Madrid yet another European title. Vinicius has carried his momentum into the 2024-25 season, with five goals and six assists in La Liga and three goals in the Champions League, underscoring his role as a dominant force in Madrid's lineup. While Vinicius has excelled with Real Madrid, his performances with Brazil's national team have been less inspiring. In the 2024 Copa America, he managed only two goals in seven matches, unable to replicate his club form. This contrast between his club and international performances has cast a shadow over his otherwise stellar season for Madrid. If you include Danny Carvajal into the picture, then you get a crazy mix. Here's a player who was clutch for both team and country, won La Liga, the Euros, the Champions League, and was phenomenal all throughout, captaining both teams on occasions. So we have Jude Bellingham, Danny Carvajal, Rodri, and Vinicius Jr. Four fantastic players who are important for their teams, but Rodri gets to be the winner. While Rodri was phenomenal, any honest fan and observer of European football would know that the Ballon d'Or wasn't given to Rodri because he is the best footballer in the world. It was taken away from Vinicius because of off-field matters. It feels more like a marketing move and a political move against Real Madrid and Florentino Perez. The coming months look to be very interesting. Would Rodri keep the pace? Would Vinicius prove the world wrong? And what would be Florentino Perez's response to UEFA? We can only assume, but there is reason he is one of the most feared men in football. If you enjoyed this video and would love to see more of this, please like and subscribe to the channel.